In the next set of videos, I'm going to describe the equations that determine the overall performance of a system. So there are two primary measures for performance. One is response time and the other is throughput. So response time is relatively simple. When you start a program, you start a stopwatch. When it gets done, you record whatever time is stated on that stopwatch. Throughput, on the other hand, determines the rate at which a certain set of jobs can be done. And both of these terms are somewhat related and yet different. So let me give you a few examples. Let's assume that you have a processor where a given program A can finish in, let's say, five seconds. If this processor is asked to run a batch of jobs, let's say that it can finish W jobs in an hour. Okay, now if I design a new processor that has that, that is just faster, right? So let's say that this processor over here had a clock speed of 2 gigahertz. Because technology improved, that same processor can now be implemented in, let's say, 3 gigahertz. As a result, program A instead of taking five seconds to finish, finishes in let's say four seconds. right? So its response time has now improved. And because this processor is faster, in a given hour it can finish you know, more than just W jobs, it can finish you know, 1.5 W jobs per hour. right? So by just making my processor faster, I can improve both response times as well as throughput. Now let's take an example where I only improve throughput. Let's start with a processor again over here that has a single processing core. That, can, that means it can only handle one thread at a time. And that one thread finishes, let's say, in five seconds. Now I design a new processor and I have more transistors on the chip. And so I instantiate two different cores. Right? So each of these cores is just as fast as the core over here. But I just have more of them. Right? So this has no impact on response times. Running a thread over here will take five seconds. Running that same thread over here will also take five seconds, right? which is the same as what it was before. So this is not improved response times, but it has improved throughput because you know, if I was able to do W jobs per hour over here, I can now do two W jobs per hour over here right? because I can run two threads in parallel. I can do two jobs in parallel. Now let's consider a case where I'm adding a policy that improves throughput but worsens response time. So just as before, let's say that I have a processor but it has two cores on it and these processors are sharing a large cache. Right, A cache is basically where you place your most recently accessed data. Now if I run only one thread at a time, right? so let's say I run a thread A over here, that is able to finish in five seconds if it runs by itself. Now if I decide to schedule uh, thread A on that core on the right and I schedule thread B on the core on the left, now both of them are running together. And you know, let's just assume that thread B is identical to thread A. Now since both threads are running together and sharing this cache space, they're able to utilize only half the cache to store their most recently accessed data, which means that they're not able to store as much data. They need to go more often to memory to fetch data. And as a result, the program now takes longer to run. Right? So both A and B take longer to run. So A finishes in six seconds, let's say, and B also finishes in six seconds because you know, let's say it's identical to A. Okay, so these are threads that if they ran by themselves, they would take five seconds to finish. But now when they run with somebody else, they both take six seconds to finish. Right? So the response time of each individual program has been lowered. But with this policy of, of running multiple threads at the same time, my overall throughput has gone up, right? Because if you assume that A is like, you know, one job, then I was able to do one job in five seconds. Now I can complete two jobs in six seconds, right? So before I was doing one job in every five seconds, now I'm doing two jobs every six seconds, and this number is higher, right? So this is a policy, the policy of scheduling two threads together on the same processor that has lowered response times of individual threads but that has increased the overall throughput of the system. Now, you can also have designs where you do the opposite, where you improve response times but worsen throughput. So before I explain that, let me just kind of clear up the screen a little bit. Okay, so now let's take the case where I've designed a processor with a single core. Okay, and now as I build my next generation processor, I have two options before me. I can either design a much larger core 
or I can make the core size smaller and have two small cores in that same space. If I go with option one, I'm essentially improving the response time of, of one individual thread, right? So let's say program A takes five seconds to run over here. When I make that single core much bigger and much better, I'm able to run that program in four seconds. If I keep the core size the same, this program takes five seconds to finish, but I'm running two of them in parallel, right? And so this is a design that is optimized for throughput and this is a design that is optimized for response times. Right? It's not going to have as high a throughput as this second design over here. Right? So you can also take measures that improve response times but give up on throughput. So now let me walk through a few definitions. You know, let's first look at what performance itself is. Right? So uh, let's assume that you're now measuring response times. You start a stopwatch when a program begins and the stopwatch when, it, uh, when, when, when the program itself ends. Measure the execution time performance is nothing but 1 by execution time. It's the inverse of execution time. And you know there are commands on say Unix systems that can measure execution times of programs for you. And these commands will also break down the execution time as user time and system time. So having seen the definition for execution time, now let's look at how you would compare two different systems. Let's first define what speed up is. Speed up is the ratio of the performances of two systems. So the speed up of x over y is performance of x divided by performance of y and since performance is 1 by execution time this is nothing but execution time of y divided by execution time of x and I'm showing you an example over here where uh, a given program takes 10 seconds to finish on system x and that same program takes 15 seconds to finish on system y. Right? So plugging those values into these equations, you can say that system X is 1.5 times faster than system Y, or stated differently, the speed up of system X over system Y is 1.5. Another way of expressing this is as a percentage performance improvement, and that is nothing but the speed up minus 1. So the performance improvement of X over Y is actually performance X minus performance Y divided by performance y, right? So if, if you get a salary raise of 10%, how do you determine that? It's basically, you know, new salary minus old salary divided by old salary, right? So if you were getting, say, $1,000 before and now you're getting $1,100, that means that you just had a 10% raise and that's, that's computed by putting numbers into this equation. So similarly, performance improvement of x over y is performance x minus performance y divided by performance y. And you'll see that this is nothing but performance x divided by performance y minus 1. Performance y divided by performance y, right? So performance x by y is nothing but speed up of x over y. And so speed up minus 1 gives you performance improvement.